Hey guys, so just a quick update. Apparently my understanding of Tau was not quite right. I went to this website right here and this guy explains that Tau actually refers to one rotation around a circle. You can see here that he writes Tau is the full circle constant and represents 360 degrees. So one rotation around a circle. So that means that this astronomical interpretation of X2815 is not correct. And what you actually need to do is here, starting at Taurus, you know, here at the end of the seven day Pudioli Terry on July 27th and 28th, you know, at the end of the celestial slack line, instead of having the moon cut a radius through the circle of the ecliptic, so going across the ecliptic like we had been doing, this new understanding about the correct meaning of tau means that the moon simply needs to go uh, one more circle around the ecliptic all the way around. So it needs to go from where it was in Taurus all the way around the ecliptic and then back to Taurus again. And yeah, I believe that would correctly reflect the meaning of Appy form, which is where we get tau from, because remember that word Appy has pi in it twice. And also the Greek uh, version of Appy has pi in it twice. So uh, pi times two is equal to tau. Okay. So yeah, that's what that Appy forum means, astronomically speaking. You go all the way around uh, from Taurus to Taurus. And it's also pretty amusing that Tau starts and ends at Taurus, right? <laughs> it's little things like that that let you know that you're on the right track. And in Acts 28.15, it says that Paul and company went, quote, as far as Appy forum and the three taverns. So we already applied the Appy forum uh, using tau to go uh, one circle around the ecliptic and then you have the three taverns and with three taverns you've got three and tavern both starting with t which you can compress then to tt or like two adjacent t's and if you look at the constellation lines of gemini it's like two t's right two connected t's or two adjacent t's so that means that the moon just has to travel one more constellation over so from Taurus over to Gemini and the moon will arrive in Gemini on August 28 or 828 and just like October used to be the eighth month August used to be the sixth month so that means that 828 used to be 628 and that's amazing because the value of tau is actually 628 and August 28th also just happens to be the 9th of Av on the Enochian calendar. So here is the Enochian calendar month 5 or Av. And you can see here the 9th of Av is um, sunset to sunset, August 27th to August 28th. So that's 9 5. But in pre-Exodus month reckoning, the fifth month was the 11th month. So in that way, August 28th is actually 9-11. And remember, the book of Haggai is based on the Enochian calendar. And Haggai chapter 2 is the 911th chapter of the Bible. So that 911th chapter of the Bible could be hinting at Enochian 9-5 or 9-11 especially since this ancient Enochian solar calendar definitely has its origins from before Exodus times. And on top of that, on the rabbinical calendar, August 28th happens to be the 24th of Av. So that would satisfy Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, uh, which hints at Zerubbabel being taken on the 24th day of an unspecified month, because uh, verse 23, which is talking about is rubbable being taken it says in that day and the last day that's mentioned here is in verse 20 where it says uh the, t the 4 and 20th day of the month okay so the 24th day of the month and it's uh the actual month there is conspicuously left out so it's the 24th day of some unspecified month and you know, that max that matches uh perfectly because august 28th like i said is the 24th day of av on the rabbinical calendar and it says here that Zerubbabel is taken and that's pretty interesting because uh, Zerubbabel in Hebrew Grammatria is uh, equal to 241, as you can see right here. 
and August 28th also just happens to be both the 241st day of the year and also exactly 142 days after the April 8th eclipse. And 142 is of course 241 backwards. So this date, August 28th, is really strongly encoding the number 241, which as I said is equal to Zerubbabel in Hebrew Gematria. And Zerubbabel is taken at the end of Haggai here on the 24th day of some unspecified month and August 28th is the 24th day of Av on the rabbinical calendar. Now August 28th is also interesting in that it's 828 and uh, 2 times 828 is equal to 1656 and remember 1656 is the year that the flood began so that's a pretty significant uh, biblical number. So in my last video, I was following a breadcrumb trail having to do with Daniel 12.12's 1335 days prophecy, which led us through the Gospels to 1339 days. And since then, we've discovered a lot more about why there is this 1335-1339 day differential. So we learned that 1339 earthly days or solar days are roughly equal to 1335 sidereal days or heavenly days so while a normal solar day just has to do with how long it takes the earth to rotate around the sun a sidereal day is more like a heavenly perspective because uh, it's the time required for earth to rotate once relative to the background of the stars or relative to the heavens you could say and that prophecy in daniel 12 12 is evidently using these sidereal or heavenly days because if you go exactly 1335 sidereal days from the abomination rollout in Israel, which is 1339 regular solar days, that takes you to exactly August 19th of this year, which was the date of the blue full moon. And a nice confirmation of that is that the 1339th verse of the New Testament is Mark 720. And Mark 720 matches the verse signature of Proverbs 720. Okay, so if you take Mark 720, uh, Mark is the second book of the New Testament, right? So that is 2720. And then if you go to Proverbs 720, which is about the full moon, that's the 20th book of the Old Testament. 720. And in numerics, you can just drop the zero, so uh, these verse signatures are identical. Uh, so Mark 720 and Proverbs 720 have identical uh, verse signatures, and Proverbs 720 is um, famously talking about the full moon. So yeah, both the uh, 1339 days from the abomination rollout in Israel and the 1339th verse take you exactly to the full moon. So the first one takes you to the blue full moon on eight uh, on August 19th, and then the 1339th verse of the New Testament takes you to uh, Mark 7.20, which has the exact same um, verse signature of the famous full moon verse. Uh, on the other hand, I believe you can still bounce things off of the um, date of the first abomination rollout in the USA, which was December 14th, 2020. Uh, for instance, while the 1339 days from the Israel rollout date takes you to the full moon of August 19th, 1339 days from the USA rollout, which was on the 14th, takes you to 814. And uh, the 814 verse signature has some strong connections to the abomination. So, uh, for instance, Song of Songs 814. Uh, Daniel 8.14 and Amos 8.14 all seem to be connected with the abomination. Uh, the connection between Song of Songs 8.14 and the abomination I covered in my last video. And then uh, Daniel 8.14 is pretty straightforward. It's the verse right here about the sanctuary being cleansed. So that's being uh, cleansed of the abomination. Uh, but why is Amos 8.14 connected to the abomination? Well, 
Amos 814, which is the last verse of that chapter. Uh, in this verse, I also see a connection to the abomination because it mentions the sin of Samaria. And this is actually a reference to the construction by Jeroboam of counterfeit temples and then placing golden calves in the Holy of Holies in those counterfeit, counterfeit temples, uh, which could be symbolic of what the abomination did. Uh, since the Holy of Holies could be symbolic of either our brain or our DNA. And this word right here derives from the root word vaca, which means cow. So in both cases, you've got a cow being um, placed inside the temple in the Holy of Holies. So that's where I saw a connection uh, between Amos 8.14 and the abomination. And remember, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and found the Israelites worshiping the golden calf, that actually took place on the 9th of Av, uh, which again corresponds to August 28th. And yeah, so you've got this striking parallel there because, uh, you know, in that scenario, Moses represents Jesus because uh, when he went up the mountain and he was there for a while, uh, the Israelites uh, said, well, we don't know what happened to this Moses guy. So it's kind of like uh, the world saying, well, we don't know what happened to this Jesus guy. He said he's going to return. Uh, and so people found other gods to worship in the meantime. And then, you know, when Jesus actually does return, he finds... Um, that the world is trusting in their pharmacia rather than trusting in God. So that's a, I thought that was a pretty striking parallel. And what's also interesting about that verse, Amos 8.14, is that since Amos is the 30th book of the Bible, its verse signature is 38.14. And like I said, you can drop the zeros in numeric. So you have 3, 8, and 14. And uh, from the date of the first abomination in the USA, December 14th, 2020, to the 9th of Av on the Enochian calendar, which is August 28th, it's exactly three years, eight months, and 14 days. Matching that 3, 8, 14 verse signature of Amos 8, 14. Now, there was also an amazing sign in the sky that Brother G44 found, and this was on August 22nd. So it was exactly one day after the seven-year anniversary of the first great American eclipse. And in this sign, the sun and the moon at the same time moved into the exact positions of the first and second great American eclipses. Okay, so here we have this graphic that sort of illustrates what I mean by that. So the first great American eclipse, uh, you know, in 2017 uh, was right here by Regulus, okay, in Leo. And the second great American eclipse this year in 2024, it was right here uh, positioned on the southern fish cord of Pisces. And on August 22nd, just a few days ago, the Moon was at that exact position on the southern fish cord in Pisces, where you know where the uh, April eighth eclipse was, and at at the exact same time that the sun was in the same exact position of the first Great American eclipse, right there at uh, Regulus in Leo. And you know what is what is an eclipse? Uh, it's a conjunction of the sun and the moon. So you had here at this moment at the same time the sun and the moon were basically miming out the positions of the eclipses of the two great American eclipses from 2017 and 2024. Now, even by itself, for the sun and moon to be in this configuration, it's actually pretty rare. It's probably less than 1% chance per year, uh, uh, mainly because the moon, when it crosses the ecliptic through Pisces here, it's not always at this level. You know, it's it varies by, um, you know, maybe like up to five degrees either way. So it could be down here some uh, months, and up here other months. So this alignment by itself is very rare. And then if you add to that the fact that it occurred one day after the seven year anniversary of this first great American eclipse, uh, well, then it becomes extremely rare and extremely unlikely. And what makes that even more amazing is that 
the last two Mercury retrogrades. Now, if you remember, retrogrades are when a planet appears to make kind of like a loop in the sky, you know, so it's like it's marking something or circling something. So the last two Mercury retrogrades happen to be in uh, Pisces and then Leo. So they basically marked those same two constellations where this alignment was about to occur. So that's like a second witness. And Pisces and Leo on the Hebrew Masroth are the 12th and the 5th constellations, which is telegraphing Revelation 12.5. Manchild caught up. And it gets crazier because at the exact same time as this alignment here, the Esther asteroid, which is marked here by this red reticule, crowned Virgo. Okay, so Virgo is kind of like symbolizing Esther. So uh, this asteroid is symbolizing um, Esther being crowned, uh, as it describes in Esther 2.17. And the king loved Esther above all women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen. <laughs> so this crowning by itself is pretty amazing. But it gets even better than that because, like I said, this happened at the same time as this alignment where the sun and moon were miming out the positions of the first and second great American eclipses. And if you sum the ecliptic longitudes of the positions of those two eclipses, it comes to 167 degrees. And there are 167 verses in the book of Esther. Okay, so the 2024 eclipse occurred at 19 degrees on the ecliptic, and the 2017 eclipse occurred at 148 degrees on the ecliptic. And so if you add that together, you get 167 degrees, and that's pointing uh, at the book of Esther, or pointing to Esther. So it's pretty amazing that the sun and the moon are reminding us of those two eclipses at the same time that Esther is being crowned by the asteroid. So apart from the Esther connection, the fact that the sun and moon are reminding us of the two great American eclipses, which were seven years apart, I think that's clearly indicating that the seven years of plenty are about to end and the seven years of famine and tribulation are about to begin. And that's also reflected in the fact that August 28th is exactly seven years and seven days after that first great American eclipse. And finally, August 28th has some pretty amazing date durations. Uh, normally I consider date durations to be a dime a dozen, but these are actually pretty amazing. So if you go from the date of the child asteroid Revelation 12 sign, which was on September 19th of last year, from that date to August 28th is exactly 11 months and 9 days. So you got your 119 there. And then from 11.9 to 8.28 is exactly 9 months and 19 days, which points back to the September 19th date. So you've got this crazy symmetry going on. There's some kind of, uh, I don't know, inflection point, for lack of a better word, that occurs uh, at this date of August 28th. And then you've got a similar thing going on here with uh, 711 or 117 which I think is uh, telegraphing Genesis 7.11, uh, the verse where the flood starts. So from 117, you know, January 17th, 2024, to August 28th is seven months and 11 days. So you've got 117 to 711. And then you've also got this crazy symmetry going on. From 7.11.24 to August 28th is one month and 17 days. So you got 711 to 117. That's just crazy. And then finally, uh, from the wedding ring eclipse date, uh, last year, October 14th. So from 10-14-23 to August 28th is exactly 10 months and 14 days. So it's 10 months and 14 days from 10-14, which I thought was pretty wild. All right, so that is pretty much all I've got for this video. I'm looking at a high watch date of the 9th of Av on the Enochian calendar, which is Wednesday, August 28th. 
Uh, but yeah, we'll see. In any case, I'm pretty hopeful for an August rapture um, for a number of reasons, one of which is, like I've shown in the past, John chapter 20, which ends with verses 24 through 31. So you have like a 2024 to 2031 there, you know, corresponding to the years of the tribulation. And it says in uh, verse 24, corresponding to 2024, when Jesus came. And it mentions uh, Thomas, which is the eighth uh, disciple. So that's, you know, like the eighth month, August. So it's like when Jesus came in uh, August 2024. And now that I look at this, I guess this could also apply to the moon being in Gemini, right? Because Thomas uh, means twin, and you know, Gemini is the twins constellation. And what did I just say? Uh, according to that astronomical analysis, the moon will be in Gemini on August 28th. Yeah, so that's maybe another way that that will be fulfilled. But of course, all we can do is guess. Only our Father in Heaven knows the actual date when Jesus is coming for us. So until that time, let's keep looking up. It looks like we're getting very close in any case. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless and Maranatha. The gospel is the good news of how Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then he rose again three days later. He did this to give us eternal life in heaven and to save us from hell. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Jesus said in John 6.47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So to be saved from hell and to have the gift of eternal life, you must trust Christ alone.